If it were only green water, handling effluent would be a much easier challenge to cope with. Manure fibres, sand and gravel, waste feed and other bits and pieces are all responsible for bringing effluent systems undone. It can be helpful to separate some of these solids from the effluent stream to prevent them wearing out pumps and equipment and blocking irrigation systems. Separating solids will mean the pond needs to be desludged less often or may prolong the life of a pond. Department of Primary Industries researcher Graeme Ward explains. On a typical dairy farm where the cows are only being milked at the shed, we usually use as a rule of thumb between 10 and 15% of the nutrients that pass through the cow land on the yard and end up in the pond. However, we're seeing increasing trends to feed pads and standoff areas which are then draining into the effluent system. So we're now finding we can have 30% or more of those nutrients now ending up in the pond instead of being returned directly to the paddock. And that puts a lot of extra load and stress on our effluent systems. Solid separation can be split into either mechanical or gravity types. Some examples of mechanical separators are the screw press and slope screens. A screw press uses a helical screw to squeeze the liquid out of the solids. These devices are good for thicker effluents and can produce solids with a lower moisture content. On a slope screen, effluent flows down an inclined fine mesh screen through which the liquid falls, leaving the solids behind to slide down the screen face. Mechanical separators leave a relatively dry fibrous material which can easily be spread onto land. Be aware, however, that mechanical screens typically remove less than one third of the solids from the effluent stream. The remainder continues through to the pond or reuse system. You'll also need a system for handling the separated solids on a regular basis. Gravity-based systems such as a solids trap, ditch or sedimentation pond allow solids to settle out of the liquid and accumulate. The cleaner surface liquid can then continue on to a second pond where it may be stored until it is reused. Gravity-based separation is more effective at removing solids, with typically half of the solids being removed. However, the settled solids in a gravity system need to be pumped, vacuumed or scooped out of the holding facility and either dried out and spread to land or spread as a slurry. If solids are stockpiled and dried out for spreading, they should be contained on an impermeable surface where the runoff is captured within a bund or bank and directed back to the effluent system. A good solid storage pad is useful to have where any feed pads are cleaned by dry scraping. When you add in a feed pad, you're changing the composition of the material. Typically what happens with a feed pad is you get a lot more uneaten feed stuff, whether it be straw or silage or whatever. So it's usually good policy in feed pads to try and scrape the worst of the solids material off so it doesn't go into the pond. And then if it's a big feed pad, look at some sort of solid separation to keep out a lot of that fibrous material that otherwise would choke up and overload our ponds. If a feed pad is being added to a farm system, all of the effluent and feed waste must be captured within the effluent system. So existing structures may need to be upgraded to cope with the additional loading. Professional advice is strongly recommended for the design and installation of solid separation systems and feed pads to avoid complications. Some farmers have found incorporating solids into the soil before sowing a crop can increase crop yields and save money on fertiliser use. And one advantage of reusing manure is that you don't have to cart a lot of water around, so it can be spread on those back paddocks where the nutrients are most needed. <laughs>